So, hey guys, welcome to another episode of English no Kuru Haju. Today we have a very special guest, Kyla Gardner. Kyla, welcome to the show. First of all, Kyla, am I saying your name correctly? Is Kyla correctly? Yes, yeah, you got it. Perfect, perfect. So, Kyla, you are a writer. You do a lot of things. You talk a lot about technology in our lives. I am fascinated by all your work. I'm super, super happy to have you on the show. So, Kyla, could you tell us just a little bit about who you are, what you do, what's going on in your life? Sure. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me. I'm super excited to be here. So, I'm a writer. And an author. I have a background in journalism, but now I would consider myself an entrepreneur because I self publish everything that I write on Amazon. So I write nonfiction books, and that's how I make my income that allows me to travel.、Um, I also travel full time as a digital nomad, and I'm working on my first novel right now, which is called Guru, and it's a thriller about digital nomads living in Thailand. And I'm so, so excited about that. I really don't think no one else has done anything similar, right? Like a fiction thriller about digital nomadism. No, there's a lot of nonfiction books, memoirs, or how to, how to, you know, quit your job and travel the world. But、yeah. there hasn't been a fiction book about it, really. I was really inspired by The Beach by Alex Garland. Which is a fictional thriller about backpackers in Thailand. But、yeah. it was written 20 years ago now. So that was before we had the opportunity to work from our laptops. Yeah, yeah, which changes a lot, changes everything. So, Kyla, your background's in writing. Did you study journalism at university? Is that correct? Yes, I studied journalism, worked for my school paper and everything. Awesome. So you are a Real writer. I have a lot of people these days who say, Oh, I'm a writer. And say,、like, Oh, what do you write?、And、it's like,、oh, I have a blog and I have four blog posts on that blog. <laughs> it's like, eh.、Okay. Right. Where's、yeah. the line drawn? Yeah. So, Kyla, you are talking a lot about, I imagine you'll touch about this in your book, but what you're writing a lot about on the internet these days is. About digital distraction, digital overwhelm, more or less how we are addicted <laughs> to technology. And this is something I'm fascinated by. And I'm curious where this story starts for you personally. Yeah, I'm fascinated by it because I, as a digital nomad, so much of my life is online. It's how I make my money, it's how I Talk to my friends who are around the world. It's how I research where am I going to go live next. And I also find the internet to be my greatest enemy sometimes in terms of when I'm trying to focus or get work done or read a book or anything that involves deep focus and concentration. And I guess it started with when I was living. So I. Originally worked, I got to Asia because I was working for a software startup out there.、Mm-hmm. And after a year, it changed ownership. Everybody was let go. And I had a nice little savings, a severance from getting let go. And so my boyfriend and I moved to a Thai island and we said, okay, we have a chunk of change in savings. We just worked for this software company. If we're going to start making money online, now is the time. Right. And I was living in this kind of paradise. And, but it was also very stressful because I had just lost my job. I was trying to bootstrap a business.、Mm-hmm. I didn't want to have, I had been traveling while working for the startup. I didn't want to have to move back home and get a job in Chicago again. And I realized when it came down to me working for myself versus working for someone else, what I produced was. What I earned money from. If I didn't produce, it's not like I was going to get a paycheck every two weeks. Right. And I realized I was really bad at working for myself. I、Me、couldn't、too. focus. I was always <laughs> clicking over to Facebook. It's so hard, right? And I, I read two books that really changed things for me. And one was The Shallows 
and the other was deep work. And The Shallows is about what is the internet doing to our brains by this constant speed. Mm -hmm. And an older book. It's older, yeah. Still very relevant. For sure. And then Deep Work is about, okay, once you kind of pull yourself away from the internet, how do you find the space to really focus and create valuable work in the world? Yes. By our boy, Cal Newport. Who Love just wrote a Newport. book called Digital Minimalism, which is driving my girlfriend insane because I don't stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Digital Minimalism, also a good recommendation for looking at how we divorce ourselves from these things. So for me, I was living on the island. It would appear to be a tropical paradise, but I was actually really struggling at that time in my life. And I realized that the worst, the worst of a day I had, the more stressed I was, the more I wanted to post a photo on Facebook that proved that I was living the dream, like post a snorkeling photo or palm trees and hammocks. And I wanted people to say, oh, your life is amazing and good for you and you look great and oh, it's so beautiful. And that really scared me too, that I had this underlying emotional tie to Facebook and all this social media. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was healthy. I was like, I don't want to be my, my reaction to having a bad day is that I want likes to solve my problems. That is not, that's not the answer. So that was really the start of when I started exploring all these questions. Yeah. Yeah. So much of that resonates very, very deeply with me because I would say I started the entrepreneurial path six or seven years ago. And immediately when you disconnect your paycheck and like what you are producing is what you earn, there is constant like existential dread (laughs) about like always need to be working. Oh my God. Always on my computer. Right. And I'm still, still dealing with that. But I do think it is, it, it's much more deep and relevant even to people that are not entrepreneurs, that do not work online 24-7, that are not digital nomads. I do think there is a very strong case to be made. Most of us are addicted to technology and we need to bring that back in. Do you agree with that? (laughs) I would agree with that. Yeah. And it's no accident. I mean, it's designed to keep you on the websites as long as possible. Yeah. Just willpower isn't enough sometimes when, when it's being designed by very intelligent people to keep you addicted to it. Yeah. So my very, this is just for my own personal gain. But how would you explain in a simple way to, let's say, the typical Brazilian that works in an office, they're on their computer all day during the office, like constantly checking Slack and WhatsApp messages and whatever. And then they come home and they continue to do those things. And then they're on Netflix, but also like looking at Instagram but it does not seem like a problem in their life. It's something that they're voluntarily doing for free. They're checking up on their friends, talking to people. Is that a bad thing? And if you think that it is a negative force in your life, why? Because I think a lot of our listeners would just think that's not a problem. Well, I certainly can't speak for everybody and go around saying you have a problem. (laughs) Yeah, you have to stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know for me, it it didn't fulfill me. I would just I would do it scroll endlessly when I was bored or when I was sad, or I was waiting in line at the grocery store and couldn't be alone with my thoughts for three minutes. And eventually I felt like that wasn't how I wanted to live my life and that I wanted to be able to read books and finish them. But it was yeah. such a such a strong force. And I think deep work really helped me because a lot of people don't 
think it's a problem or don't think about it or don't care about it. And that's fine for them. But I think Cal Newport was one of the first people to tell me, you can quit Facebook. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. I, yeah. You're free. Yeah. <laughs> and and I felt like I had never heard that before. No one had told me you can opt out and that's okay. And that was revolutionary to me. Yeah. So just for our listeners, could you give a brief summary of the main points of, of deep work and what that means to you? So Cal Newport argues that we're all, a lot of us are knowledge workers now and we work on the computer and the work we create is all from us communicating with people, coming up with ideas, knowledge work. And so many of us are distracted that we're just kind of dipping in and out of these periods of concentration. We have an email ping, we have a Facebook notification. We're never really focusing on one thing and thinking deeply about it. And that skill is going to become more and more rare. And that's a valuable skill. And that's how you create good work in the world is you're the person who can take three hours in the morning, really focus on something, come up with a new solution. And that that's more valuable than my inbox. I'm at inbox zero and I don't have any more emails to respond to. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a super super powerful idea. He even talks about the idea of solitude in his new book, Digital Minimalism, where he defines solitude, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but not just when you're physically alone, but when your mind is free of outside inputs. So like I meditate, I try to spend time, you know, being reflective but I've recognized that I am never alone with my thoughts. And when I stop social media and like stop using my phone a lot, I recognize that addiction just moved to podcast and audiobooks. Like if I'm in the grocery store, I'm still listening to a podcast <laughs> and I'm still <laughs> not alone with my thoughts. Yeah. It's so, it's, uh, there always is a new replacement for the addictions, I find. Yeah. So I guess my next question, maybe this is a natural question, is what can we do about this? <laughs> Help. 